In this video, I'm gonna talk through what I eat in a day, training as a hybrid athlete for both marathon goals and for strength training goals. But instead of sitting here and talking to you about all of it, I'm gonna actually take you with me as we go through a day in my life, talking through the exact meals that I'm eating, why I'm eating them, and sharing the principles that you can take and adopt into your own life to craft the perfect plan that works for you. It is going to blow your freaking mind. 4.15 a.m. I'm whispering because I've got sleeping wife and son nearby. And if there's one life hack that I've learned, if you wake up early, you never, ever wake up a sleeping wife and son. All right, just came out to the deck. It's 4.23 a.m. Saturday morning. Gonna hit this cold plunge for the next five minutes. Always dunk. <sighs> Ooh. Okay, I've got an early morning run and training session. 12 mile run, easy miles. Should be somewhere between, I don't know, say 130 and 150 heart rate for most of it. And then a Metcon workout. So that's gonna be more high intensity weights, some cardio stuff, kind of hit work, more like a CrossFit style workout. Gonna do the run right around 6.15 a.m. and then right after that, go straight into an 8 a.m. Metcon. Pretty heavy volume from a training perspective, so nutritionally I need to make sure that I'm adapting to that, and that's gonna be one of the principles that we talk through when we get into this. I'm actually gonna track uh, the nutrition will show it up on screen. I'm gonna use an app called My Macros Plus, but there's plenty of different options. We'll actually show it on screen as I go through the different things so that you can see how I'm doing it, how I'm thinking about tracking it, and what all of that looks like. All right, I start off every morning with the exact same routine, which is mango chili, element, salt, and electrolytes powder, and a scoop of AG1 greens powder. Get some electrolytes. Get some sodium in your system to start the day. And the AG1 powder, I just think of as like nutritional insurance. I've been taking it since 2011. Make sure, especially when I'm traveling or if I'm, you know, missing little pieces in my diet, it makes sure I'm still getting the greens and the things that I need on a daily basis. Has been a staple for me for a long time. Cheers. But the next step, and probably the most important step of this morning, Dunkin' App. Obviously got that cold brew order. Let's go get it. First meal of the day, we're gonna do two eggs, about a quarter of a carton of egg whites, half a cup of quick oats with some whole milk, raw honey, and walnuts. Okay, so tracking this breakfast, we've got two large eggs, a half a cup of egg whites, a half a cup of oats, two tablespoons of raw honey in there, and a quarter cup of chopped walnuts. All of that put together is about 660 calories. That's 32 grams of protein, 65 grams of carbs, and 33 grams of fats. The AG1 and Element, I think there's maybe like 40 or 50 calories in AG1. I normally don't track it. I don't consider it consequential from a end calorie standpoint and what I'm trying to do. Um, so I haven't tracked that on here, but uh, first meal of the day, this is gonna be my pre-run meal. I do like to get some protein in me. Um, a lot of people just go carb only prior to runs. I personally just feel better when I have some protein in me to start the day. Which brings me to principle number one, prioritize protein. For me, hitting one gram of protein per pound of body weight is really important. I normally am actually at about 1.2 given how much training I'm doing. So for me, that's like right around 200 to 215, 220 maybe on the high end grams of protein per day. You're gonna see how I actually hit that during the course of the day because it sounds like a high number. Uh, but anywhere between 0.8 grams to 1.2 grams of protein per pound of body weight is a good zone for you to be in if you're doing a lot of training. So that's principle number one, prioritize protein. We're gonna go smash this, get over to my desk and get some work done. I actually don't have a lot of time, so I'm gonna eat this at my desk and do a working breakfast. Fueled up for this 12 mile easy run. 
Got the bright hat on because it's still a little bit dark out. Let's go do it. So it begins. On these long runs, I typically go listen to a audiobook, fiction audiobook usually. Just kind of lose yourself in a story. So right now I'm listening to Beneath a Scarlet Sky, which is an amazing historical fiction novel based on World War II. Incredible story, beautifully told. I think the author is Mark Sullivan. For these longer runs, I think the best way to do them mentally is to go out half the distance and then back half the distance. It just like mentally breaks it up and allows you to just feel like the whole second half, you're like, I just gotta get back home. So for a 12 mile run today, I'm going six out, which takes me into Scarsdale and then six back to the gym. This part of my life is called peace. Just hit the turnaround point, six miles in. A lot of people would bring a gel to have right now. It's an easy run today, which means lower caloric burn, lower intensity. So I don't have a gel with me. That also brings me to principle number two, which is get 90 plus percent of your calories from whole, unprocessed, single ingredient foods. That means that gels are something that I typically try to avoid. If I need something for a harder, longer run, I'll bring a honey stick, some raw honey, to get that from a real unprocessed source. It also means that before the Metcon workout that I'm gonna do, if I need something, it'll probably be a banana rather than any sort of carb powder, gel, processed chemically ingredients. I try to avoid that as a rule of thumb. That's principle number two. Let's go finish this run. Eleven miles down, one mile to go. Final stretch. Twelve miles in the books. Eight average pace, 150 heart rate. I'm gonna go hit this Metcon. Feel pretty good. I'm not gonna eat anything before it. Just gonna have a little drink with some ProMix pre-workout for a little bit of beta alanine and creatine. Full house. miles plus a Metcon in the books. Time to go refuel and take you to principle number three. What are you doing up there? Hi. Hi. You want to come down and have some breakfast with Dada? No. No? No? Come on. Come on down. What's up, buddy? What are you eating? Roman Bloom. What I eat in a day. Healthy, child-friendly. Cheeto snacks. <laughs> you gonna help me make my breakfast? <laughs> what are you eating? Little healthy baby Cheetos? Yummy. Mwah. <laughs> All right, we're gonna make one of my favorite meals in the world, steak and eggs. Spray the pan, little non-stick spray. I use this olive oil non-stick spray, keep it simple. I've got some leftover New York strip from yesterday. I'm gonna eyeball it, but I think we're gonna do about four ounces of this stuff. A couple eggs that we'll cook alongside it. Uh oh. I'm gonna finish that off about a cup of jasmine rice. 
You just see me measuring it. This is a third of a cup measurement. So I'm gonna do three scoops here, about a cup of jasmine rice alongside that. So it's gonna kind of be like a steak and egg fried rice. Should be delicious. While that's frying up, I'm gonna get a little fruit plate going to go alongside it. I love grapefruit, so you're gonna do some slices of grapefruit, pomegranate seeds, which are incredible for you, some raspberries, assuming these are still good. Get a few of those in there. Some blackberries, and why not, some blueberries. Let's go. Give these pieces of steak a little flip. Crunch on the outside, which I love day after steak for that reason. Give that rice a little mix. It was pre-cooked rice, so just gonna get that little bit of fry on it. These eggs look like they're about done. Oh, this is gonna be so good. Oh my goodness. Woo. This brings us to principle number three. Tailor your carbs to your workout schedule for that day. What do I mean by that? I do something that is basically like carb cycling, which means that on high intensity workout days, I'm going to eat more carbs, and on lower intensity or rest days, I'm gonna eat less or almost close to no carbs, or at least no starchy carbs. I also try to focus the carbohydrates around the workout, so right before, during, and then after the workout. That just allows your body to have the fuel you need during the workout, and to replenish after the workout most effectively. Carbs that you're gonna end up having late in the day or at night, which is when most people cheat, are the ones that end up converting in your body into fat. It ends up being one of the reasons that we don't look the way we wanna look. If you focus all of your carbs, especially starchy carbs, like rice, like potatoes, like oats, like those things, right around your workouts, you won't have nearly as big of a problem because those carbs will be getting used as an energy source in and around the workouts. So today was a high in, higher intensity workout day with the 12 miles and then with the Metcon, so I'm gonna have more carbs. So I had the first meal of the day with the oats, which you saw. This meal is going to be slightly higher carb as well with the cup of rice and then all of this fruit that you can see here. I'll track it and we'll walk through the exact macros of this meal, but first, I wanna dig in because this looks delicious. All right, so I just tracked this meal and it's coming out at 41 grams of protein, 79 grams of carbs, and about 30 grams of fats. That's 738 total calories. Like I said, with principle three, having both the starchy carbs and then also some of the fruit around the workout, especially given it was high intensity, so that 80 grams of carbs number, I feel really good about that. I wanna hit that higher total for the day uh, on a day with this kind of high intensity and focus it really in the couple of hours surrounding the workout. So I'll probably have a lunch that's also higher in carbs in a couple of hours, or at least a snack that has some carbs in it in a couple of hours, and then taper off carbs later into the day. creamy chocolate protein ice cream recipe. We got whole milk, fat-free milk, raw cocoa powder, sugar-free chocolate pudding mix, and some chocolate fudge protein powder. That's it. All right, gonna start with one cup of whole Fairlife milk, maybe just under one cup. Pour that in carefully so I don't spill. The same amount, like just under one cup of Fairlife fat-free milk. The only reason for that mix is it just keeps the overall calories down of the whole thing. Then I'm gonna do a tablespoon of the Hershey's cocoa powder. Give it that nice chocolatey taste. I just do a little sprinkle of the sugar-free chocolate pudding mix. Reason for this is it this is what gives it the nice consistency. So I don't do a ton of this because it's got some ingredients in it that I don't like, but enough. Hi. Roman's down there saying hi. He wants in on this ice cream as well. And then the last ingredient here is just a scoop of whatever your favorite chocolate protein powder is. I use this chocolate fudge brownie from my buddy Zach's company. No affiliation, but it's great for the ice creams. He's at Flexible Dieting Lifestyle on Instagram. He's got all the best protein ice cream recipes. We're gonna blend this up and then throw it into the freezer for at least eight hours to let it freeze over, and it's gonna make a delicious treat tonight.
into the creamy holster cup. Get fancy with it. This will go into the freezer, and tonight we will dine in paradise. All right, for lunch, four ounces of ground turkey, about 12 ounces of sweet potato. Get those carbs in. This is all pre-cooked, so just using the pan to heat it up. Got it from a meal prep company that I use. Pretty convenient. All right, four ounces of ground turkey, 12 ounces of sweet potato. Tracking this at 29 grams of protein, 70 grams of carbs, and eight grams of fats. Roman wants to get in on the action here. Not the most gourmet meal I've ever made, but gets the job done, and we're gonna be on the run this afternoon. What do you think of this meal? Does this look good? Does that look yummy? back over to mama. We've got about a 10 minute walk over to the playground with Roman here. So during this time, I'm gonna hit you with principle number four. Balance your meals and calories across the day. Now, this might be a little bit different advice than what you'll hear from a lot of fitness gurus, nutritionists, scientists, whatever, people that talk a lot about these different fads like intermittent fasting or whatever it might be, whatever the latest thing is. I just think that for the vast majority of people, the simple and best strategy is to balance your meals over the course of the day. You'll notice that my meals today happened at around 5.30 in the morning, then at around 9.30, then at around 12.30. We'll have our dinner at around 4.30ish, and then we'll have the last meal of the day, say at around 7.30ish, evenly spread across the course of the day. I think that's the best way to avoid overeating, to avoid undereating, to make sure you're getting your nutrition in, to make sure you're getting your macros in. For the vast majority of people, I think that it's the simplest way to approach it, avoids those hunger pangs, avoids the situations that lead to you overeating or undereating, which is where you're going to miss your goals. And not make the steady progress that you want to be making, whether it's to grow, whether it's to maintain, whether it's to get leaner, whatever it is, eating throughout the course of the day in a balanced cadence is gonna be the best approach. And I should add, I've tried all of those things, every single fad you can imagine. The long fasts, the short fasts, the daily fasts, the carnivore, the all these different things, I've tried it. And what works best for me and what I know will work best for most of you is the balanced approach, the simple approach. It's a rule of life. Simple is beautiful. Hey guys, I'm going to go behind. Whoa. So, where are we going? Swinging over to the grocery store to pick up some food for dinner. Gonna try to make this quick. A lot of the time we do buy our dinner groceries day of partially because it gives you the flexibility to pick what you're feeling like later in the day, but also partially because the grocery store we use is literally like, I don't know, a tenth of a mile away from our house, so it takes five minutes and it's super convenient. Feeling some sort of like burrito bowl type thing tonight, so I'm gonna pick up some veggies for that, a base, and some meat. Should be a pretty easy little grocery store haul. Three minutes in and out with the grocery haul, grass-fed beef, some ground turkey, onions, bell peppers, some shredded cabbage, and cauliflower rice as the base. Keep it simple, it can be delicious. Absolutely love these things for the base of a burrito bowl because the entire bag is only 60 calories. Now keep in mind, I cook dinners for both my wife and myself, so portions are all gonna be at least doubled up. So it might look like a lot, but portion it out when we actually throw it on our plates. 
I also try to keep the cooking process as simple as possible to make it repeatable. So you'll see all the veggies into a single pan and both turkey and beef, which is gonna be the two meats I'm gonna do in the same pan as well over here. Simple is beautiful. We keep it so simple that this whole dinner making process that I got going on right now will probably take under 10 minutes from the time that I throw things into the pan to the time that we're eating. Incredible. There's no real recipe to this. I'm not throwing tons of spices and different things into it. It's meat in the pan, it's veggies in the pan, cauliflower rice stew in the microwave, basically done, sit down with our son and have a meal in under 10 minutes every single night. Time to plate these bad boys up. For her? For me? About four ounces for the missus. And 10 ounces for me. Pretty good at eyeballing this at this point. Your leftovers for tomorrow. Voila, burrito bowls. All right, just track this meal. We've got 10 ounces of the meat. We've got basically two thirds cup of peppers and onions and a cup of shredded cabbage and then the full bag of cauliflower rice that comes out to 66 grams of protein, 37 grams of carbs and 20 grams of fats. As I mentioned, lower carbs as you get into the later hours of the day, just given I try to focus it around the workout time. So this is a lower carb dinner, high in protein, really delicious and super, super easy to make. Let's go smash it. Dinner wrapped up, little man bathed and in bed. I'm gonna go catch a sauna and then come down for principle number five and the meal you have all been waiting for. Out of the sauna, out of the shower and freshly shaved which brings us to principle number five, the last principle of the day. Enjoy yourself intelligently. Don't be so dogmatic and strict on yourself that it hurts all the time to follow whatever your routine is. Find some things you love and enjoy them intelligently. That brings us to the final meal of the day, which is my enjoy myself intelligently. Now, this is the one I've been teasing, and it is going to blow your freaking mind. Protein ice cream tastes just like a McDonald's McFlurry, like a delicious soft serve ice cream. Unbelievable. 50 grams of protein in this thing, very few carbs, unbelievably macro friendly, and freaking delicious. As good as any Ben and Jerry's I've ever had. And I'm gonna walk you through it now so you can see the experience and hopefully enjoy something like this for yourself. This bad boy is the secret. The Ninja Creamy makes the most insane protein ice cream. So earlier today, mixed this up, threw it in the freezer for, I don't know, eight or 10 hours. It's frozen solid now. You can see it completely frozen over. I'm gonna throw this thing into the Creamy and watch what happens. Light ice cream setting. Look at that ice cream consistency that comes out. Unbelievable. Like a real chocolate ice cream in there. Now, if I put a splash of milk in and run it through again, I could get more of like a soft serve consistency. For now, I'm gonna stick with this. Do you wanna treat myself though? So I'm putting in an eighth of a cup of chopped pecans in there. And I'm gonna run this through one more time on the mix-in setting, which is just going to mix in those ingredients, mix in those, uh, those pecans there, and make a delicious treat. Come on. Oh, unbelievable. The macros on this, 49 grams of protein, 25 grams of carbs, 20 grams of fats, about 470 calories. Ridiculous, ridiculous. Almost 50 grams of protein in this thing. And look at how freaking tasty that is. I say a lot of things change my life, but this changed my life. And I guarantee it'll change yours. I have no affiliation with that company in any way. 
but this is unbelievable. When I say enjoy yourself intelligently, 50 grams of protein in an entire pint of protein ice cream, that's enjoying yourself intelligently. Final quick thing, supplements that I end the night with. These sleep pouches from Momentus. This has magnesium and a couple other sleep promoting ingredients. Some vitamin D drops, because most of us are deficient in vitamin D. And some omega-3s from Momentus as well. Keep it simple, end the night, and that's gonna be a wrap. All right, recapping the day of nutrition as I finished this ice cream. The full day was 218 grams of protein, 278 grams of carbs, and 112 grams of fats for a total of 2,937 calories. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I modulate the carbs based on the training. Today was a rather intense training day, so that close to 300 grams of carbs is right around where I wanna be. If you saw me tomorrow, which is just gonna be a lift and no run, that carb figure would be lower. The calorie total would be around the same because I would ratchet up the fats. So I'm trying to stay right around that 3,000 calories a day, maybe just south of that, and I just tweak the fats and the carbs. That's what I talked about earlier around that carb cycling. So carbs are higher, fats are lower on the high intensity training days. And on the slightly lower intensity training days, the fats will be slightly higher and the carbs will be slightly lower. The total calories is still gonna be right in that arena where I feel good and comfortable. That's all for this video, guys. It's about time you all headed out. I hope you'll adopt at least one of these five principles into your life. I know you'll get value from it if you do. It doesn't take a lot. Slight improvements make a big, big difference. If you enjoyed this video, you're gonna love some of my other day in the life and vlog videos where I walk through some of the principles about how I live, how I train, how I learn, and more. You can check out some of those videos right here on the screen. And until next time, everyone, stay curious. I say a lot of things change my life, but this changed my life.